Hey everybody, it's Miss Roxanne here with a moon landing. Uh, I'll be giving a, a little miniature book review, and the book that I'll be covering is A Field Guide to Lucid Dreaming, Mastering the Art of Oneronautics by Dylan Tuchillo, Jared Zeisel, and Thomas Peisel. And it's a nonfiction book from 2013, and as you can see, I read it on Hoopla. What is this book and what is it about? Well, it's a guide to lucid dreaming, and as you can see here in the little part that I've uh, circling here, a lucid dream is one in which you become aware that you are dreaming. So that means that you are conscious within the dream, uh, you know what's going on, you know that you're asleep, you know that you're in bed, uh, you have all of your memories and whatnot, and uh, eventually you'll be able to control what's in the dream because you are conscious within it. And uh, this guide, it will teach you how to reconnect with your dreams, how to have a lucid dream, and what to do once you're lucid. Um, so it is, uh, unlike other field guides, it actually is meant to be read, read from beginning to end. Uh, I know when we think field guide, you think of hopping around and whatnot. But this one, uh, it, it builds on from techniques from the beginning to end, so that's why you want to read it that way. While you might think of lucid dreaming as being a spiritual practice, this book's actually quite secular. It spends quite a bit of time uh, describing the science and psychology of dreams. It even starts out in this very first chapter describing an experiment done in England in the 70s, uh, demonstrating that consciousness was capable within the sleep state. Uh, it it also goes through quite a bit of explanation of the different stages of sleep, including here on this page you can see it, it describes uh, REM sleep, also known as rapid eye movement sleep, because that is when dreams occur. So it's using science to inform its techniques of lucid dreaming rather than uh, connecting with certain spiritual entities. In this book's uh, explanation of lucid dreaming techniques from beginner to advanced, it starts off with just the very basic, which is just remembering your dreams, as uh, you can't control them if you don't know that, you're ha that they're happening in the first place. It then goes into different ways of inducing and detecting uh, lucid dreams, such as setting alarms to uh, activate REM sleep, um, doing what they call a uh, wild or wake initiated lucid dreaming, and then the very cornerstone, which you can see on this page, which is called um, reality checking, uh, which means that you do some kind of test uh, by identifying dream signs, such as the ones if you've written down in your dream journal, um, to be like, oh, I, I guess I'm dreaming now. Uh, in addition to symbols, it will also help you question your reality by doing things like looking at clocks and seeing if the time changes or being able to pass your hand through certain objects. It's all to help you identify that these are possibilities which can only, been ha only happen within the dream state as opposed to in our reality as we know. After that, it goes into the different levels of lucidity, such as uh, just kind of vague, fleeting awareness that you are in a dream, all the way up to being fully immersed and conscious within the dream world. It also gives you tips on staying in a lucid state, such as uh, in this uh, page, you can see that the, one of the tips they give is spinning around. Um, Apparently that is something that they have found works for keeping you grounded in a dreaming state. And then um, other things such as, you know, what is lucid dreaming for? Starting with uh, kind of exploring the hedonic things that you can do, you know, indulging the senses and truly consequence-free living. But it also spends quite a bit of time saying that, hey, like the rules of uh, physics don't operate here, so you can learn how to fly around for example and it gives you different uh examples of different kind of superpowers that you can play with you know while you're having fun within a dream because why not in addition to having fun the guide covers the psychological reasons why you would want to try lucid dreaming uh, effectively saying that in a lucid dream you have the opportunity to directly analyze and interrogate the different symbols in your dreams if you're in a lucid dream, you can directly go up to, I don't know, your, your old professor and ask, hey, why are you in my dream? Given that this book was written by uh, three experienced lucid dreamers, they are less concerned about the literal meaning of the dreams um, as much as they are about kind of the 
giving you advice on the different interactions that you can expect. You can see on this page it's got a, a couple of different archetypes that you might come across, but it doesn't give you a literal meaning. It's just telling you, hey, these are the kind of interactions that you might be able to do within your dream. The idea being that you would use those interactions to learn more about yourself. Similarly, the guide explains how you can use lucid dreaming as a method for uh, creativity, innovation, and problem solving. You can see in this illustration they liken it to uh, incubating an egg, uh, in which the egg is the dream or the goal, and you are the incubator, or the dream world is the incubator. Um, basically saying that, you know, once you become experienced enough in lucid dreaming, you can, at the beginning of your dream cycle, say, I want to figure out this, or I want to solve this problem. Can I have the dream help me out? Because within the dream, there's no limitations. Let's say you're trying to change your career. Uh, what you could do within this sort of dream incubation method is say, hey, I want to change my career path. Can you give me advice on what kind of job I should be looking at or what kind of skill that I should get? Um, while it may not give you a direct answer, it might help you figure out some ideas or paths that you hadn't considered before because you don't have all of the limitations of the you know, real world weighing down on you and preventing you from thinking about your situation in a different and more exploratory way. Now that I have covered the content, let's cover the presentation of that content. So overall, this book is uh, its a very casual sort of book. It's very easy to understand, very relaxed prose, and uh, it really presents everything in as easy to understand way as it possibly can with lots of uh, historical, psychological, scientific explanations for lucid dreaming and what it's used for. Uh, it also has plenty of personal accounts of lucid dreams to help you get an idea of should this uh, happen for you, what, you, what it might be like as well as plenty of uh, goofy little puns. You might be able to see uh, the pun on the page there, lucid in the sky with diamonds. Uh, it also has some you know, neat illustrations that are kind of vintage woodcut style with a little bit of a um, symbolist bent to it, which is you know fun and helps break up the text. The downside, and this is probably just the downside of uh, this being an ebook, is that it's a little goofy to navigate. Now, you know, the upside of Hoopla, as you can see from, you know, watching this video, there is the menu option with the searching and whatnot, which makes it easier for you to, to jump around a little bit. But um, I think some formatting was lost. There were multiple times when I was reading where uh, it was in the middle of the narrative explaining something and then it would suddenly go into some personal story and I had no idea what was going on. Uh, even on this page, looking at it on its face, you can't tell what is a story, a personal story, and what is the actual narrative, the, the text. Um, you know, I have to, I'm pointing them out to you here, right there. It's, it's not obvious. Now, this is probably uh, a fault of the translation to the ebook process. This is actually fairly common. Um, they just kind of upload the text and the images as is. They don't do the hard work of reformatting everything. Uh, that being said, it's still, the, the content is good enough. It's easy enough to understand that uh, I can forgive a little bit of goofiness that uh, is because of the format. To wrap things up, I would recommend the book, um, Field Guide to Lucid Dreaming. Uh, if you're interested in learning what lucid dreaming is, um, giving it a try. I picked this up because I've had lucid dreams happen spontaneously in like small bursts in my past. I felt like this was a pretty good kind of middle of the road guide to figuring out what lucid dreams are, how they work, how to improve them. Um, I think it's to its credit, it combines the science with some of the more spiritual aspects without going too deep in either side. Um, if you want something that is more sciencey or more about symbolism, then you're probably going to want to get a companion book to it. Uh, there's certainly plenty of books about the science of sleep and, you know, any number of dream dictionaries that you could look up. But if you are interested in trying out lucid dreaming for the first time or just kind of curious what it is, I would say give it a try. And the great thing is that because it is on Hoopla, even though I have it borrowed right now, all you have to do is sign up with your library card and you can borrow it too. There are uh, 
no exclusive books on a hoopla that means that anybody can borrow one at the same time you know you just get 15 borrows a month which is pretty good um so that was my moon landing i hope you uh enjoyed it hope you find it helpful and uh have good reading